The West Midlands, in the heart of England, has been home to many a famous musician, numerous inventions, and it's also home to the Walsall Recycling Centre. Gloves are on, so let's get ready to rummage. Entrepreneur and furniture designer Jay Blades is here looking for three items destined for the dump that he can salvage, scrub up and sell on for a profit. Well, I don't know about you, but down here at the recycling centre today, I'm having a smashing time. In order to have such a smashing time, <laughs> Jay has been given special permission to rummage the rubbish. So what do you think? It's not my size, is it? Or my colour. I think we'll draw a veil over that one, Jay. And anyway, John's arrived with a boot full of potential bounty. Don't tell me this is yours. Yes, sir. Are you throwing this away as well? Yes, sir. Oh. I'm doing a good turn. It's a gentleman who's ill at the moment in hospital, and we're just trying to tidy his garage out. OK, so this was in the garage then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Must be pretty old, I would have thought. Yeah, it is so, quite old. Uh, How long have you known the family then? Have you known them a long time then? 40. Probably 50 years. Can I take that, yeah? Yes, of course you can. No, yeah, brilliant. no problem. If I'm able to turn it into something yeah. fabulous, what I'm going to do is stay in contact with you and then let you know when I've done yeah. it. OK, that's, that's fine, thank you. Thank you. No problem, that's fine. Brilliant. You sure you can manage? I've okay. got it. OK, all the best. Jay has his first item, a large brown reclining lounge seat. Does John see any potential in it? I would have thought so, because it's pretty good condition. It wouldn't go without furniture at home, that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> now, it's not every day you find a chair like this. It's retro, cool, and it's exactly what I wanted. And to tell you the truth, I think this one's a no-brainer. Once this has got a lovely colour on it, it's going to bring us a profit, and I know just the person to take it to. And the lucky person about to receive it... Simeon Horton-Smith. Simeon has been making waves in the upholstery world mixing classical techniques with fresh modern design. His passion is to give old furniture new life and a chance to be loved again. I love the character of an older chair. I like the story of it. That's what makes it exciting about working with a chair that's got history to it. People come back and they pick it up and they're like, wow, is that the same chair? And that's, you know, that makes it all worth it, all the long hours worth it. If it's a chair with a bit of character you want, Simeon, then you're in luck. With the lounge chair safely stowed away, Jay's on the hunt for two more items. And it seems all this searching has made him a little bit peckish. I need a cup of tea with a slice of cake. That's what you need to bring. That's all I want. I'm a cheap date. <laughs> I'm more of a current bun man myself, but there's no time for 11s's, as Pauline's pulled in with something that looks potentially prehistoric. Hello. What have we got here, then? How are you? I'm Jay. Hello, Jay. All right. Oh. What are you throwing away here, then? Uh, these were, were old fencing. This is old fencing, yeah? Yes. It's quite rusty as well. Yeah. So is it from your garden? My granddaughter's garden. It's fallen down. Oh. And it, it obviously was, years ago, the fencing to stop you getting to the railway track. So then this just needs clearing out then, yeah? Yes. Is it all right with you if I take some of this, or all of it? Yes, that's fine. That's yeah. fine, yeah? Oh, thank you. And what I'll do, if I'm able to turn it into something, then I'll keep in contact with you and let you know what I've done. Right, yeah? that's very interesting, yeah? Is that's it? fine. Yeah? Thank you. Thank all you. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, Jay, what have you got your hands on? There aren't many people who would see potential in so much rust. Pauline's off to finish helping in her granddaughter's garden. You're on your own for ideas on this one, Jay. So what we've got here is iron rods. Now, they are quite dangerous in the current state that they're in, and they're full of rust, but there's loads of them, and they're still quite strong. And I think I know just the person to take this rusty collection to, to turn this into something shiny. And the crafty type who can expect a delivery of rusty railings... Kev Paxton. Kev worked for over 20 years as an industrial blacksmith before giving it up to pursue his passion, forging reclaimed metal into works of art, inspired by the Scottish countryside's wildlife. 
It's all sort of feel good art. We didn't want to have like this one. Mm, what's that? You know, it's all it's all about just mother nature and feeling good and smiling basically. You want to do something that's really difficult. It gives you like more incentive to, to push harder and to do it. So uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would say it's an, an obsession now. From rusty old railings to a work of art that'll make you smile, Kev might have his work cut out. With one item left to find, Jay's still looking for a project that he can take on himself. <laughs> Did you see that? That's nothing to worry about, Jay. If you stay a safe distance, it's armless. Michael's arrived with a boot full of loot. Does he have anything of interest for Jay? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? All Enjoy. right, thank you. you Hello, right? Jay. Yes. So what are you throwing away here? What's, what was that? That, that was a wall unit. Oh, man. And then these? Yes, chairs, the same thing. They don't have the fire safety mark, so well, unfortunately, charity shops won't take them. Right, so these... So how long have you had these, then? We've had them about 40 years. 40 years? God, blow me. Oh, hello. How are you doing? You all right? Is that your grandson? That's my grandson, Freddie. He's my little helper today, yes. How are you doing, mate? Oh, so you've got four of these as well, haven't you? Yes. Any more at home? No, it was only four. Only four. But they're not the most trendiest, if you don't mind me saying. No. But they're <laughs> solid. Um, and with a little bit of sprucing up, I think they'll come back to life, actually. I think, they're, I think they're quite nice. So, if it's all right with you, could I take these? Of course. Brilliant. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> take care. Thanks again. Thanks. All right. Four dining chairs are Jay's final find of the day. But is Michael surprised he snapped them up? Very surprised, yes. I'd be interested to see what he can make of them. Perhaps he can do something with them that'll make them more appealing. They're solid, and we've got four of them. Now, that's a bonus. But they are so far from cool. But I suppose that's why I'm here. I've got to make the uncool cool. But I've definitely got my work cut out with these. Jay's found his three items, and his time at the tip is over. The brown lounge chair is heading to upholster a simian. The rusty old railings are bound for blacksmith Kev. And the dining chairs are destined for a makeover from Jay. That's three items confirmed. What are they going to become? Well, that's TBC. Better get to work. Manchester, a hustling, bustling northern powerhouse. But don't be fooled by its industrial past. It's home to a beating heart of creative flair. The perfect place for Jay to bring the old brown chair. Now, this chair is a great find. Now, the only other person that I know that will appreciate what I've got is Simeon. So I can't wait to take this inside to him, tell him my ideas, and get this one sorted. So I'm hoping Jay's going to arrive today with something like... Uh, a statement chair. Uh, we always get a really cool project from Jay. I'd like to do something that's full on design and a statement item. So, yes, yeah, a little bit nervous, but very excited to see what he's going to turn up with. The old brown lounge chair certainly makes a statement. I'm just not sure it's one we want to hear. How are you doing, Hello, Jay. How you doing? You all right? I got you a gift, mate. Want to get it up on the bench? Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Think of that. Well, Jay, I think <laughs> you've outdone yourself there looking at that. What a perfect chair. What are we going to do? Well, I was thinking to have a bright colour on the back, like probably an orange, and then a dark colour on all of the cushions. Mm. But you're the man that can, and um, yeah, tell me what ideas you've got. Well, I reckon without these cushions on, we can pretty well much say it's an egg chair nearly. I reckon we get rid, we keep a seat cushion, but like, look. Yeah, flower for you. Oh, thank you. It's very cool. Um, if you look at this now and taking that cushion out, it's kind of creating a totally different shape with it. So I reckon we lose the cushion covers. We're going to put new foam on it. I do like the idea of removing stuff because yeah. that then means to me that the price. Oh, we're, not going, we're not going down that road again. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I learned this from last time. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this again. But we're not getting rid of half the chair. No, we're going to add to it. We're going to add to it. Oh, you're going to add to yeah. it. All right, cool. We're so gonna... how much is the comfortability? Gonna cost me. Yeah, I think probably around 500. Oh, about 500. All right, it's a deal. Cool. Yeah, I'm oh. excited, Jay. I'm excited. I'm a little bit worried because you're getting rid of cushions. 
We're going to add that's some. That's the first one, mate. We'll add some. That's some. All right, well, at least I got me flower. Give me that back. No, no, that's no, my okay. flower. Cool. Right, I'm going to leave you with All a right. chair and I'm gone. Thanks, ma'am. Have fun. See you later. All right, we'll do. The old lounge chair is about to lose its cushions, but ideally, not its comfort. Now, this is why I love this job. Simeon totally agrees with me that that chair was a great find. Now, he's got an idea of getting rid of the cushions. Really? £500 budget? Is he going to get it right? I just have to wait and see, won't I? All these times where you think, this is what I'm going to do, when you start doing it, you're like, oh, this isn't working. So I'm hoping it's not one of those occasions. But it's never easy when you're redesigning a chair because you've got to cut all the new patterns. But, yeah, proper excited about it. It's cool. Look. Simeon has a budget of £500 to transform the old lounger. But can he make a seat cosy without cushions? I've got no idea, frankly. With Simeon taking care of the unloved lounger, just outside Scotland's beautiful capital city, the rusty old railings have reached Kev's workshop. So we've got some material which has arrived from Jay this morning. Um, pretty good material. Looks like raw iron, um, lots of it as well. So we'll, we'll wait till Jay phones and see what he suggests. He's always got good ideas. So we'll see if we can come to a, a plan together. Looking forward to his call. Hi, oh, Jay, how are you? Oh, I can't you guys, thank you. Oh, good, mate, thanks. Good. Cool. Did you get the package I sent up to you? Yeah, I've had a, a package arrived this morning, yeah. So, the idea that I had, basically, you've done daffodils for me, but now I thought, yeah, let's do some roses. But, obviously, I think you've got nothing better than you want to do with it. Because we've got so much material here to work with, I think we should make a nice, like, a bird tree, like a, you know, hang, like, sort of fat balls on them and coconut shells, feed the birds. Be nice to Mother Nature. So what kind of budget do I have to set? 250, I think, for, possibly. Oh, what? 250 is good. So consider your hand shaken, and that's a deal. It, it's shaken. Good man. Brilliant. All right, mate. Take care. All right, dude. Take care. Bye bye. Kev seems pretty confident he can transform this great big pile of rusty old railings. Come on then, enlighten us. What's the plan? Quite excited about this one. I'm happy with the material I've got to work with. Uh, Jay seems happy with my idea as well, so we'll get cracking. No time like the present. Jay's agreed a budget of £250 to transform the old rusty railings into a bird feeder shaped like a tree. And if a bird in the hand is worth two in a bush, how many do you get for a metal tree? Back in Wolverhampton, Jay's ready to tackle the four dining chairs. And he's planning a bit of a spruce up. Now, these are just ordinary chairs. The only thing they've got going for them, really, is that there's four of them, which is a bonus. Now, what I need to do to them is bring them right up to date and do that by having a lovely new fabric, gluing them together so they're safe and so I can sell them. Jay's a master at bringing old furniture back to life. So first things first is take the back off and also the seat. And mid-century is just his bag. He must be in heaven here. This frame needs to be glued. Because that joint there and that one is coming out. That is not a conventional approach to gluing. Always take them apart before you put them back together again. And it's also because glue doesn't like sticking to glue. So I have to get these joints open, clear off the old glue, and then attach my new glue. I don't want to damage too much of the chair. So you have to be quite gentle. So that is the old glue, and that's what I've got to get rid of. It looks like the gentle approach is over. With the old glue gone, it's time to find out what's under that old tan varnish. In the 60s and 70s, what they had a trend of doing was covering everything in a kind of orangey varnish. And the trend now is to have more of a natural look in wood. And that will look even better with just a clear, light varnish. Yeah. Ah, I recognise that as a more conventional approach to gluing. 
I've used the wood glue to stick this, and rather than just leave it, what I'm going to do is strap this all up so it holds in nice and tight, exactly where I want it to be. Jay's using ratchet straps to clamp the chair. So now this is glued, I can put this to one side, focus on the seat and the back. With the chair re-glued, let's hope it'll now be safe to sit on. Next up, it's time to remove the old coverings before Jay moves on to creating a new foam seat pad to make the seat nice and comfy. So that's my seat. Then a layer of Dacron is added, which is used to reduce the friction between the foam and the fabric covering. So the foam can be quite harsh if you just put it straight on. So I like to put on a bit of Dacron, and then I'm going to put some calico on top of that as well. Calico fabric is a plain white woven cotton cloth, which in this instance has been treated to make it fire resistant. So there we have it. Looks all right, doesn't it? Now all I have to do is to supply the top fabric, because you didn't think I was going to leave it at that, did you? I know what you're asking, where is it then? I've been saving the best to last. Now that's cool, isn't it? Obviously, when you're laying fabric, the plants have to come up that way. So like a normal tree would grow. You would never have them growing downwards. I don't know why, but you just wouldn't do that. To apply the fabric, Jay is using the same technique he used for the calico. Basically, lots of stretching and lots of staples. So that it's done and dusted. As far as I'm concerned, I'm happy with that, but there's no point smiling yet, because I've got three more to do. I think we'll leave you to it. Jay spent a total of 70 pounds on materials to revamp the dining chairs. But will he be sitting pretty with a profit once they're all done? With the old dining chairs well underway, it's time to turn to a chair of a different kind. Simeon has already begun the transformation of the old leather lounger into what he hopes will become a sumptuous seat. Here we go, then. We can call this the big reveal, I guess. Here we go. Is that it? There's still a bit to do, starting with cleaning up the base with a good vacuum and lots of elbow grease for the rust. It's just coming off quite easily. This is a messy job, by the way. This is a messy job. That looks so much better. But how are you going to make it spin? OK, so I'm going to grease this now so we can get it moving a bit better so it's got a nice sort of sleek movement to it before we put it back onto the upholstered new chair. It's good to use this paintbrush because it can get into like all the nooks and crannies of it rather than having to take the whole unit apart. I'm just going to use some of this old foam that we took from the seat and turn it over just so it gives it a bit of stability. Uh, and let's see how we're doing with it. OK, so it's moving freer. Still a little bit of work to do on it, maybe a bit more cleaning up of it, but you can see it's nicely moving now and we've kind of freed it up a little bit so it's going to have that nice tilt and swivel net mechanism back to the chair. The chair's been stripped back and will be spinning freely once more. But what's it going to look like? So the exciting bit, my favourite bit, is the fabric, and this is exciting. Look at this. It's like a quilt. Already it's comfortable on a table. It's just absolutely beautiful. Look at that. I just love it. It's a great fabric and it's going to look amazing on the chair. But what we've got to figure out is the pattern. But it's about how I'm going to get this to sit into the contours of the chair. At this moment in time, I don't have a clue how I'm going to do that. It's a little bit worrying at this stage that I've chosen a fabric like this and I've set my heart on doing it in this fabric. Um, it's whether it's going to work or not. But we're going to have to make it work. I'm sure you'll think of something, Simeon. It's time to take care of the comfort something Jay was very concerned about. So, spray adhesive on both surfaces, not on your face. We're going to just start at the bottom here, and we're going to work our way up and around the chair. When using a spray adhesive, it's a good idea to wear a protective mask. You can see it all nicely taking shape now. So once we've trimmed all this off, it's going to look like a totally different chair. And it's really comfy. 
I reckon we can just put a scatter cushion on this and Jay's going to be happy already with it. So, we're nearly done now. <laughs> Jay's not that easily impressed, and neither is Gypsy by the look of it. Leaving Simeon working hard on his lounge chair transformation, just outside the Scottish capital, Kev's hoping to make a bird feeder tree from rusty old railings. So we're going to uh, get cracking. I'm hopefully going to turn some of these finials into sort of small leaves, and that'll be the start of our really, hopefully, funky bird feeder. So we'll, we'll get going with it. A finial is a crowning detail on the end of poles or railings and was often used in Gothic architecture. Metal melts at about 1,200 degrees, so we are going to take this just, just to before melting point. Um, that's your, the, the same strength when iron's hot. That's where it comes from, so, you know, uh, we get it to almost white hot, that's when metal's going to start melting. And then we strike, so we get the, the cascade of sparks, and hence the scars and the... But that's what ruined my modelling career. You might think blacksmithing is all about hitting things hard with a big hammer. It's not. Sometimes it's about hitting things gently with a big hammer. I'm putting um, the veins into the edge of the leaf just to make them look a wee bit more realistic. Once we've got the veins in, we'll, we'll do a wee bit more shaping and, and then we can use these as the branches. It's going to look quite quirky and quite old by the look of it. So. I'm kind of happy about that, that's sort of my style. You can see the sort of layers where it, there's a wee bit of split there. This is where it's been fire welded originally. The finial have been fire welded onto the spike. So I, I, I like that, it's more rustic and old, so I'm not really going to bother about that. I'm just going to leave it. And in my imagination, that's like a piece of the bark peeling off the tree. So I'm quite happy to leave it like that. The leaf design is clear, but how will that fit into the overall plan, Kev? My plan is uh, to make a really sort of a, an organic, free sort of flown tree, all, you know, so maybe blown with the wind, so it all sort of leaning over. And the branch bits I've been doing just now, they'll sort of get welded on and they'll just sort of hang any old direction, quite organic. Um, and then I'll take the part, I'm going to do an, try another part just now in the forge, and I'm going to sort of make them into tendrils, and they'll sort of, sort of wrap around the tree and. We'll be able to hang the, the seed feeders and the nut feeders off of them, um, and they'll they'll give it nice colours, greens, and all the leaves, etc. Be very organic, and yeah, hopefully, Jay will like what I see. I'm just pulling the bar now to make a, a sort of branch, like one of the branches off of the tree. Just you know, as a, I can see it as it's sort of grown off, like on the drawing, one of these branches here. Um, I'll do them all like that before I put together. So I'll just sort of lay them down on the ground. And because it's, it's not really thick, it's only about, you know, 10, 12 millimetre. Um, and it's wrought iron, so it's actually very soft. I'll do this one a wee bit different, just so they're not all the same. So this sort of gives you a good idea of what I'm hoping to achieve. It's looking kind of lifelike already. Um, so all I've got to do is forge another six, seven branches up to hang things on, tidy the leaves up, put it all together. Fingers crossed, take it to the galvanizers. Um, it could all go wrong there. Um, but I'm sure my friends in Glasgow look after it for me, so good luck. In Wolverhampton, Jay's in his workshop putting the finishing touches to the four old dining chairs. I'm so pleased with the way these are turned out. I think all of the fabric, the wood, everything's just working well together. Unable to find a new home after 40 years in use, time had been called on the dull dining chairs. But now, Jay has given them a bright new future. Replacing the bland beige coverings of old, Jay has re-upholstered the seats with a modern, fresh fabric, which meets all UK fire safety standards. The old-fashioned tan varnish has been sanded back to reveal the natural timber. With a real lightness of touch, Jay has brought the chairs bang up to date, proving that sometimes less really is more. 
I think I've done it. I've made the uncool cool. Basically, this lovely grey fabric will go into anybody's interior. And if you look at the timber, it was hidden with all that mm, dated varnish. But rubbing it back, it just oozes out the beach. So now, I've just got to take some pictures and sell them. When Jay met Michael at the tip, he was passing with four old dining chairs. So how long have you had these, then? Well, we've had them about 40 years. 40 years? His chairs were far older than Michael's helper for the day. Oh, hello. How are you doing? You all right? That's my grandson, Freddie. He's my little helper today. It was with high hopes that he let Jay take them away. Perhaps he can do something with them that'll make them more appealing. Well, there's no problem on that score, Michael. And Jay soon had the revamped chairs up for sale online. And they didn't hang around for long. A home furnishing shop in Lincolnshire snapped them up. And owner Claire was there to take delivery. So the chairs look great. They've restored them really well. And I'm sure we'll find a table that'll complement them. Jay's in Aldrich to catch up with Michael and his grandson, Freddie, to give them the good news and hand over the profit. Hello, Mike. Oh, hello. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing well, thank you. And you've got Freddie as well. How you we doing, have Freddie? got Freddie. You remember him from yeah. um, the recycling centre, yes. That's correct. So do you remember the chairs that you brought down? Yes. And they're from here, aren't they? They were, yes. So how long have you had them? Around 40, 45 years, since we were married, actually. Oh, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. Well, I was the one person that took that project on. Yes. And what I did with your chairs... Oh, them. gosh. You see that, Freddie? Wow. So I've sanded them down a bit and then just give them a new recovering. So what do you think of those? Different. <laughs> very, very It is very different, isn't it? It's very nice. Do you like them, Freddie, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. So somebody else liked them as well, and they paid me some good money for them, and I have for you £30 cash well, for you. Well, well. All right? Thank you. <laughs> right. So what are you going to do with that money, then? I think because my daughter suffers badly with Crohn's disease, right. I'm going to hand this over to the Crohn's Society so they can fund some further research with oh, it. Oh, that's a brilliant course. And dear to the family. Well yes. done. Thank you. Thank you. Freddie? Thank you very much. Well, you never know, I might see you guys down the recycling centre again. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you take care now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. 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 I'm sure Freddie has better things to do, Jay. Jay spent £70 refurbishing the four dining chairs, giving them a whole new lease of life. The chairs were sold for £100, giving Michael and Freddie a profit of £30 to hand over to Crohn's and Colitis UK. With one profit safely handed over, Jay's in Manchester to find out if Simeon has cracked the old lounge chair transformation. I'm super excited about this chair, but there is one big thing here that I'm very nervous about, and that's the fact that I've gone over budget. And I've gone over budget quite a lot, so um, I'm a bit sort of uh, a bit worried about Jay arriving. First of all, I want him to like the chair, but also I want him to like it enough that the budget's gone over. So we'll, we will see, we will see. I'm in Manchester, and I want to see what Simeon's done with that armchair. Now, he said he's going to take the cushions away. Don't know about that. Losing the cushions might not be your biggest worry when you hear about the budget. When Jay laid eyes on it, the lounger had lounged its last. Simeon has been a very busy bee. A vivid yellow colouring gives the chair a golden glow while the quilting pattern gives just a hint of geometric beehive chic. Getting rid of the cushions has given the chair a sleek new shape. The wooden base has been polished up, a new seat cushion has been created, providing all the comfort you'd want. And the lounger complies with current UK fire safety standards. Will this honeycombed comeback leave Jay buzzing? Simon. Jay. Wow. How you doing? I'm very good now. Are you ready? You ready? The back. Oh, let, let me take the back in a bit. I'm too excited. <laughs> Bumblebee fa fabric. It's the yeah. beehive chair. All right, go on then. Show us the front. Ready? Yeah. There we go. God blimey, that is. Well, you surpassed yourself again. Come oh, on. Oh, thanks, man. It's just like... <laughs> no, you've done it thanks. again. Is it... The fabric is cool. Yeah. The chair's nice. Mm. And as I said to you, I wasn't 
truly with you when you was taking away the cushions and stuff like that. But now... I've spent a lot of hours with it. <laughs> I've spent a lot of hours, yeah? Yeah, a lot Is of hours. Hard? Yeah. Really hard. Oh, well, you know what we have to speak about then, this mm. budget. How, how do we do? Let, let me tell you a bit more about oh, the chair first. <laughs> oh, no, don't tell me no more. Let me I tell love you a little bit more. Let me tell you a little bit more. <laughs> okay. So, we had right. a few little problems. Right. And at some point, yeah. I was like, I can't use this fabric. I had to hand-stitch everything into the back and then hand-stitch the back of the chair onto that. So there's a lot of hand-stitching in it. Um, so I'll quickly tell you now, we're at £110 over budget, sorry. <laughs> you, so, you slipped that right in there really quickly, didn't you? £110 over budget, what was yeah. the budget originally? £500, um, 610 That's not bad. Yeah, yeah. All right, you've made my job easy. Amazing. Thank you. Great to see you. We'll see you I'll soon. see you soon. Take care. Thank you. See, now this is why I love my job. Simeon has just created a work of art, and my eyes, I couldn't stop looking at it. All I've got to do now is sell it. I don't really want it. When Jay spotted John at the tip, he had a boot full of lounger. Don't tell me this is yours. Yes, sir. Are you throwing this away as well? Yes, sir. He was clearing out a garage for a family friend. How long have you known the family then? Have you known them a long time then? 40. Probably 50 years. Turns out Jay was lucky to get his hands on it. He wouldn't go without furniture at home, that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> A chair as eye-catching as this beehive beauty was always going to create a buzz. It was advertised for sale online, and a private buyer made a beeline straight for it. Now Jay's in Staffordshire to show John what became of the old lounger and to hand over some money. Hello. Hello, Hello John. John. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Yeah, ben? Of course. No. We've got to stop meeting like this. Yeah, I know. But do you remember that? brown chair you brought down to the recycling centre? Yes. It wasn't yours, if I'm not No, it wasn't, no. Who did it belong to? Then? It was a gentleman who was in hospital, he was poorly, so we had to move it out of the garage. OK. So, uh, well, I took it to a, a young man called Simeon in Manchester, and he turned that chair into... I think it's quite amazing. No, that's, that's really good, that is. Do you like from it? From what it was, yeah. <laughs> that's it, brilliant. Remember, it was a bit... It was a bit dated with that. A bit dated with the, yeah, the leatherette type stuff on it. Yeah. That's really good, that is. Well, I'm also pleased to tell you that I sold it, and I have for you, £85 profit. Oh, thank you very much. That's that cool? really good, yes. So what are you going to do with the money, then? It's going to a chat the charities, Alzheimer's and uh, Parkinson's charity. All oh, right. Because you've got Parkinson's, so that's right. why I'm going to that. So the person who owned the chair originally, he had originally, Parkinson's? He's got Parkinson's, yeah. Oh, he had Parkinson's, right. yeah. So then you're going to give it to that charity? Charity, yeah. Brilliant. So that's where it's going to. Oh, brilliant, John. Nice one. Nice, right. thank you very much. You thank take you. care, man. No problem, thank you. See you soon. OK, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, I think John liked that bumblebee chair as much as I did, and I'm glad that the money he's got is going to a charity that's dear to the chair. Nice one. Simeon's cost to liven up the lounger was £610. It was sold for £695 which has left John with an £85 profit to pass on to charities supporting sufferers of Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. In a smiddy north of the Boulder, Kev's putting the finishing touches to his bird-feeding creation. And Jay's up with the lark this morning. After all, the early bird catches the worm. I'm looking forward to Jay arriving today. I think he's uh, got a free bit of shock. Um, I've done what I think is a really good transformation of some rusty old rods that I think were once a gate, maybe a fence. I'm here in Edinburgh to see Kev, and I'm a little bit excited about this one. I'm just hoping that he's lived up to my expectations. When Jay decided to take away the old rusty railings, it was tricky to see why. Well, knock me down with a very big feather. Jay's faith in those rusty old railings has been well and truly repaid. Kev has created a bird feeding tree sculpture. Each rusty railing has been heated, hammered, bent and shaped into branches, leaves and stems. The trunk has been formed by welding railings together. Kev's imagination has really taken flight with this one. How we do, Kev? I did. Well, I'll come and pick up some rods. What's going on? No, no, no. Is this the rods? This is the rods, mate. Are you joker? This is amazing, man. 
Yeah, Bob's a Laker. I love it. I want to start feeding off of this. But this <laughs> all, the, all the rods that I gave you, this is it. Yeah, yeah. Even, even the flat bits of coat, this is them turned into leaves. See, the... the, the nice and you, soft. You've left me kind of speechless here, really and truly. Like, this is amazing. Every time you just take it that extra level, this is a bird feeder to beat all bird feeders. This is just like... Yeah, the deluxe model. <laughs> it's a bit more than deluxe, man. This is like the penthouse. Wow. Wicked. So then this, what's that, a tray for? Birds like blackbirds, they won't hang from a, a nut feeder or a seed feeder. Oh. So you've got to sort of give them something to feed out as well. So, <laughs> so you've thought about all of the birds then? Yeah, not just one. Them all. Yeah. Oh, well done, well done, I like that. I left you with, was it £250 budget? Yeah, yeah. How did we do? It was easy to make, you know. It's Is it? Right, I know it was really soft, that, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Thank you, sir, thank you. This is, um, yeah, this, it's, it's amazing. I'm, um, as I said, I'm lost for words. So it's very rare you get me lost for words. So well done. Um, I'm going to have to get selling it now. Good on you. Cheers, mate. Well, that was a success. Jay seemed to really like it. I'm lost for words. Now, when someone does that to me, it just means it's a work of art. Now, Kev has that ability to always do that. Just push it to that another level. Now, all I have to do is just sell it. So that went quite well. Uh, Jay was speechless, which is a first. Um, he seemed to really like what I've transformed the old gate into. Um, so he's happy, I'm happy. When Jay met Pauline at the tip, her boot was full of rusty rubbish. What are you throwing away here then? Uh, these were, were old fencing. This is old fencing, yeah? Yes. And Pauline knew all about its past as well. It obviously was, years ago, the fencing to stop you getting to the railway track. No longer needed, Jay was happy to have it. And Kev came up trumps with his bird feeder creation, which was soon winging its way to the home of a private buyer. Now Jay is in Aldridge to catch up with Pauline to show her what became of the old rusty rods and hand over the profit. Hello, Pauline. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> All right, good. So you brought down some metal rods to the recycling centre. That's right. And they were not yours, were they from no, this house? No, they were from my granddaughters and her husband, yes. Oh, from the granddaughters? Well, they were in the garden and they were in a danger, yes. Because she's got little ones, hasn't she? Yes, that's right. And they were quite spiky. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All right, well, I took your metal rods up to a guy called Kevin Edinburgh, and basically what he turned them into was that a bird feeder. It's beautiful. It is, isn't it? Absolutely beautiful. So these are all of the rods, and he's just turned them into a beautiful bird It feeder. is. It's stunning. You like it, yeah? Yeah. Oh, bless. Well, I'm quite glad to tell you that somebody else really liked it, and they bought it, and I have for you a £110 profit <laughs> for your metal rods. <laughs> it's quite amazing, isn't it? It's absolutely, yeah, <laughs> mind-blowing. <laughs> so what are you going to do with the money, then? Well, I didn't expect it, so I don't <laughs> oh, know. But I will probably suggest that we buy something for their garden, as it was their rods. Yeah, brilliant. But you look blown away by it. You, you weren't well, expecting anything. I am. I'm just absolutely amazed. <laughs> well, good luck. Thank you so much. No, thank you. All right? And yeah. you take care. And enjoy the money. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't you just love a happy ending? Now, that is the type of reaction I love to see. Pauline was speechless. And what that means is we've got the transformation perfect. Well done, everyone. It cost £250 to create the bird feeder tree. It was sold for £360, leaving Pauline with a profit of £110. Jay salvaged three items from the tip in Walsall. The old leather lounger has become a bright beehive beauty. The old rusty railings have been transformed into a bird feeding tree. And the four dining chairs were given a fresh new look. Who would have thought something could have been done with my tip finds? They've been made over and they've made a profit. That's three amazing transformations from things that were going to be chucked.
The West Midlands in the heart of England has been home to many a famous musician, numerous inventions, and it's also home to the Walsall Recycling Centre. Gloves are on, so let's get ready to rummage. Entrepreneur and furniture designer Jay Blades is here looking for three items destined for the dump that he can salvage, scrub up and sell on for a profit. Well, I don't know about you, but down here at the Recycling Centre today, I'm having a smashing time. In order to have such a smashing time, <laughs> Jay has been given special permission to rummage the rubbish. So what do you think? It's not my size, is it? Or my colour. I think we'll draw a veil over that one, Jay. And anyway, John's arrived with a boot full of potential bounty. Don't tell me this is yours. Yes, sir. Are you throwing this away as well? Yes, sir. Oh. I'm doing a good turn. It's a gentleman who's ill at the moment in hospital, and we're just trying to tidy his garage out. OK, so this was in the garage then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Must be pretty old, I would have thought. Yeah, it is so, quite old. Uh, How long have you known the family then? Have you known them a long time then? 40. Probably 50 years. Can I take that, yeah? Yes, of course you can. Oh, yeah, no problem. If I'm able to turn it into something yeah. fabulous, what I'm going to do is stay in contact with you and then let you know when I've done yeah. it. OK, that that's cool? fine, thank you. Thank you. No problem, that's fine. Brilliant. You sure you can manage? I've okay. got it. OK, all the best. Jay has his first item, a large brown reclining lounge seat. Does John see any potential in it? I would have thought so, because it's pretty good condition. It wouldn't go with our furniture at home, that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> Now, it's not every day you find a chair like this. It's retro, cool, and it's exactly what I wanted. And to tell you the truth, I think this one's a no-brainer. Once this has got a lovely colour on it, it's going to bring us a profit, and I know just the person to take it to. And the lucky person about to receive it? Simeon Horton Smith. Simeon has been making waves in the upholstery world, mixing classical techniques with fresh modern design. His passion is to give old furniture new life and a chance to be loved again. I love the character of an older chair. I like the story of it. That's what makes it exciting about working with a chair that's got history to it. People come back and they pick it up and they're like, wow, is that the same chair? And that's, you know, that makes it all worth it, all the long hours worth it. If it's a chair with a bit of character you want, Simeon, then you're in luck. With the lounge chair safely stowed away, Jay's on the hunt for two more items. And it seems all this searching has made him a little bit peckish. I need a cup of tea with a slice of cake. That's what you need to bring. That's what you want. That's all I want. I'm a cheap date. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more of a current bun man myself, but there's no time for 11s, as Pauline's pulled in with something that looks potentially prehistoric. Hello. What we got here, then? How are you? I'm Jay. Hello, Jay. All right. Yes. What are you throwing away here, then? Uh, these were, were old fencing. This is old fencing, yeah? Yes. It's quite rusty as well. Yeah. So is it from your garden? My granddaughter's garden. It's had fallen down. Oh. And it, it obviously was, years ago, the fencing to stop you getting to the railway track. So then this just needs clearing out, then, yeah? Yes. Is it all right with you if I take some of this, or all of it? Yes, that's fine. That's yeah. fine, yeah? Oh, thank you. And what I'll do, if I'm able to turn it into something, then I'll keep in contact with you and let you know what I've done. Right, yeah? that's very interesting, yeah? Is that's it? Fine. Yeah? Thank you. Thank all you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Well, Jay, what have you got your hands on? There aren't many people who would see potential in so much rust. Pauline's off to finish helping in her granddaughter's garden. You're on your own for ideas on this one, Jay. So what we've got here is iron rods. Now, they are quite dangerous in the current state that they're in, and they're full of rust, but there's loads of them. And they're still quite strong. And I think I know just the person to take this rusty collection to to turn this into something shiny. And the crafty type who can expect a delivery of rusty railings... Kev Paxton. Kev worked for over 20 years as an industrial blacksmith before giving it up to pursue his passion, forging reclaimed metal into works of art, inspired by the Scottish countryside's wildlife. 
it's all sort of feel good art. We didn't want to have like this. Mm, what's that? You know, it's all it's all about just mother nature and feeling good and smiling basically. You want to do something that's really difficult. It gives you like more incentive to to push harder and to do it. So uh, yeah, I, I would I would say it's an, an obsession now. From rusty old railings to a work of art that'll make you smile, Kev might have his work cut out. With one item left to find, Jay's still looking for a project that he can take on himself. <laughs> Did you see that? That's nothing to worry about, Jay. If you stay a safe distance, it's armless. Michael's arrived with a boot full of loot. Does he have anything of interest for Jay? Hello. Hello. How are you doing? All Jay. right, thank you. you Hello, right? Jay. Yes. So what are you throwing away here? What's, what was that? That, that was a wall unit. Oh, man. And then Maybe. these? Yes, chairs, the same thing. They don't have the fire safety mark, so well, unfortunately, charity shops won't take them. Right, so these... So how long have you had these, then? We've had them about 40 years. 40 years? Cool, blimey. Oh, hello. How are you doing? You all right? Is that your grandson? That's my grandson, Freddie. He's my little helper today, yes. How are you doing, mate? Oh, so you've got four of these as well, haven't you? Yes. Any more at home? No, it was only four. Only four. But they're not the most trendiest, if you don't mind me saying. No. But they're <laughs> solid. Um, and with a little bit of sprucing up, I think they'll come back to life, actually. I think they're, I think they're quite nice. So, if it's all right with you, could I take these? Of course. Brilliant. Thank you. It's a pleasure. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> take care. Thanks again. Thank you. All right. Four dining chairs are Jay's final find of the day. But is Michael surprised he snapped them up? Very surprised, yes. I would be interested to see what he can make of them. Perhaps he can do something with them that'll make them more appealing. They're solid, and we've got four of them. Now, that's a bonus. But they are so far from cool. But I suppose that's why I'm here. I've got to make the uncool cool. But I've definitely got my work cut out with these. Jay's found his three items, and his time at the tip is over. The brown lounge chair is heading to upholster a simian. The rusty old railings are bound for blacksmith Kev. And the dining chairs are destined for a makeover from Jay. That's three items confirmed. What are they going to become? Well, that's TBC. Better get to work. Manchester, a hustling, bustling northern powerhouse. But don't be fooled by its industrial past. It's home to a beating heart of creative flair. The perfect place for Jay to bring the old brown chair. Now, this chair is a great find. Now, the only other person that I know that will appreciate what I've got is Simeon. So I can't wait to take this inside to him, tell him my ideas and get this one sorted. So I'm hoping Jay's going to arrive today with something like uh, a statement chair. Uh, we always get a really cool project from Jay. I'd like to do something that's full on design and a statement item. So, yes, a little bit nervous, but very excited to see what he's going to turn up with. The old brown lounge chair certainly makes a statement. I'm just not sure it's one we want to hear. How are you doing, Simeon? Hello, Jay. How are you doing? You all right? I've got you a gift, mate. Want to get it up on the bench? Yeah, absolutely. There we go. What do you think of that? Well, Jay, I think <laughs> you've outdone yourself there, looking at that. What a perfect chair. What are we going to do? Well, I was thinking to have a bright colour on the back, like probably an orange, and then a dark colour on all of the cushions. Mm. But you're the man that can, and, um, yeah, tell me what ideas you've got. Well, I reckon, without these cushions on, we can pretty well much say it's an egg chair, nearly. I reckon we get rid, we keep a seat cushion, but, like, look... Yeah, that's a flower for you. Oh, thank you. It's very cool. Um, if you look at this now and taking that cushion out, it's kind of creating a totally different shape with it. So I reckon we lose the cushion covers. We're going to put new foam on it. I do like the idea of removing stuff, because yeah. that then means to me that the price should oh, be not cheaper. Going, we're not going down that road again. <laughs> I, I, I learned this from last time. I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this again. Come, but, we're getting rid of half the chair. No, we're going to add to it. We're going to add to it. Oh, you're going to add yeah. to it? All right, cool. We're so gonna, how much is the comfortability going to cost me? Yeah, I think probably around 500. Oh, about 500. All right, it's a deal. Cool. Yeah, I'm oh. excited, Jay. I'm excited. I'm a little bit worried, because you're getting rid of cushions. 
We're gonna add some. That's the first one, mate. We'll add some. That's some. All right, well, at least it got me flour. Give me that back. No, no, that's my flour. Cool. Well, I'm gonna leave you with a chair and I'm gone. Thanks, ma'am. Have fun. See you later. All right, we'll do. The old lounge chair is about to lose its cushions, but ideally, not its comfort. Now, this is why I love this job. Simeon totally agrees with me that that chair was a great find. Now, he's got an idea of getting rid of the cushions. Really? £500 budget? Is he going to get it right? I just have to wait and see, won't I? All these times where you think, this is what I'm going to do, when you start doing it, you're like, ah, oh, this isn't working. So I'm hoping it's not one of those occasions. But it's never easy when you're redesigning a chair because you've got to cut all the new patterns. But, yeah, proper excited about it. It's cool. Look. Simeon has a budget of £500 to transform the old lounger. But can he make a seat cosy without cushions? I've got no idea, frankly. With Simeon taking care of the unloved lounger, just outside Scotland's beautiful capital city, the rusty old railings have reached Kev's workshop. So we've got some material which has arrived from Jay this morning. Um, pretty good material. It looks like raw iron. Um, lots of it as well. So we'll, we'll wait till Jay phones and see what he suggests. He's always got good ideas. So we'll see if we can come to a, a plan together. Looking forward to his call. Hi, Jay, how are you? Hi, oh, Kev, how's it going, mate? I'm good, mate, thanks. Good. Cool. Did you get the package I'd sent up to you? Yeah, I've had a, a package arrived this morning, yeah. So the idea that I had was basically 